Principality of Jealousy and Envy, Part 7. We will reap what we sow. If we sow jealousy and envy, we reap their rewards. If we sow hatred or bitterness, what will we reap? See Job 4, verse 8. That is the bottom line. Ezekiel 35, verse 11 says, I will do to you according to your anger. I will do to you according to your envy. And I will do to you according to your bitterness and your hatred. If we sow hell's garbage, then we have no right to cry because we reap the bitter fruit of our immoral labor. We need to have balance in our lives. Before God will hear our plea, He has set certain conditions we must meet. For example, if we have a disease and cry out to God for healing, but at the same time we want to ignore our problem with spiritual harlotry, God will not heal us. If we cry out to God because of some major financial loss, but steadfastly refuse to share our resources with His work, He will not hear us. If our adult child is afflicted by drugs, illicit sex, and alcohol, and we plea with God to heal him, but sit in front of X-rated movies drinking a few scotch and sodas every night, he won't hear our prayer. On the other hand, if we cry out to God in humility as a response to the Holy Spirit's conviction, and we honestly seek the root cause of our devastations, if we repent and give up idolatry and harlotry, he will be faithful to deliver us. Second Kings 17 verse 39 says, But the Lord your God ye shall fear, and ye shall, he shall deliver you <coughs> out of the land. Let me repeat that. 2 Kings 17 verse 39 says, But the Lord your God ye, ye shall fear, and he shall deliver you out of the hand of all your enemies. Our ministry centers on teaching the truth about repentance and the restoration of a right relationship with God. We teach the process of sanctification as the antidote to spiritual and physical disease. 2 Timothy 2 2 verse 24 to 25 says and the servant of the Lord must not strive but be gentle unto all men apt to teach patient in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth what is our motivation to do this Verse 26 gives us the answer, that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. God wants to heal, save, and deliver us, but he cannot if we continue to rebel against him. He wants to set us free. John 8.36 says, If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Do you know why God wants to set us free? Because then we can teach others how to have the same freedom that we have found in Jesus Christ. In Psalms 51.13, David says, Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. However, before he made this pledge, he prayed, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Psalms 51, 10-12 David dealt with his own life before he attempted to help others we need to clean out our spiritual house 
to such a degree that we will have the freedom and power to effectively minister to others. Jesus is more than, in, than sufficient to act as our cleansing agent. Many churches today preach a gospel that ignores <clears throat> personal responsibility or accountability. They attempt to deliver the sweet message of God's salvation without teaching the need for repentance. They teach the blessings of being freed from Satan's curse, but fail to teach that with freedom comes the responsibility to walk away from Satan and toward God. If, then, and but are very important words to pay attention to in Scripture. Blessings from God are always conditioned on our obedience. Some teach that obedience is legalism. I disagree. Do not teach obedience is to teach rebellion and witchcraft. To not teach obedience is to teach rebellion and witchcraft. Not to teach obedience is to teach sub stubbornness and idolatry. 1 Samuel 15, 22-23 says, And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. Samuel said, Obedience is better than sacrifice. Some preachers say instead that if we sing loud enough, long enough, and raise our hands high enough, God will accept our praise and heal our diseases. They say, just come down here and let me touch your forehead. God's power will heal you. They might as well add, you can kiss your old wife goodbye. You can steal your neighbor's wife because they present grace without obedience. Maybe they see momentary healing from an adrenaline rush, but never permanent healing from the rush of the filling of the Holy Spirit. What is the source of murder? Full of murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. Romans 1 verse 19 to 31 have you ever seen any of these natures manifested in people we know or in ourselves they need to go Christ came to win the eternal victory over sin and leave behind his spirit this makes it possible despite the presence and power of Satan for us to have a right spirit and to have spiritual understanding and discernment to have victory over sin. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 57 to 58 reassures us, But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain. Shh! Be quiet! There they go. They're going like a, like mad hatters. Almost done here. There's an evil spirit that brings with it jealousy and envy covetousness and contempt. It's a spirit of rebellion. Ezekiel 44 verse 23 says, Teach my people the difference between the holy and profane, and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. Hebrews 5 verse 14 says, Even those who by reason of use 
have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. And I'll be right back with verse uh, with uh, part eight as soon as I can get them 